And then a few other things about martial arts that I want to talk about just nobody ever talks about is one, just lifting weights and being big is a weird martial art in that you're fighting without fighting. People don't start fights with you as much yeah. when you're bigger. Um, one of the things you're talking about combative sports and not having a ref telling you when to start and being not in a padded environment is if you play fight with your friends drunk all the time, you're actually kind of working on a high level martial art yeah, because yeah. there's no start, there's no start, you're messing around, there's people around at a party, mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, you're avoiding corners of tables and... You know, and the other thing is, the other thing that happens with training in martial arts specifically is, 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 is training violence makes you more aware of violence. So the more you train and the more aware you become of your surroundings, right? The more you start to realize little things start happening. And I don't, I'm not one of those people that believe that violence is unpredictable. Violence is, to me, it's very predictable. I can almost always see the signs before it happens. Sometimes it happens quick, sometimes it happens slow, but I can always start to see where, where the situation led to. And I think that's one of the things that made me a good door guy was that I was able to perceive the violence when it was small and then nip it in the bud before it got too big. And being a martial artist, here in Oakland and running a martial arts school and everybody knowing that I have had more people come trying to challenge me at the door than I could think of. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's part of it, right? So it's like, you know, you, you, you train, people know you train and they're going to want to test you. They're going to want to push your buttons. Um, and learning how to de-escalate that and learning how to deal with people, learning how to posture when you need to, learning how to not posture, learning how to give them the owl, you know, learning how to let them feel like they have their manhood or whatever the situation may be. You know? Somebody could teach a class or something. The black belt of shit talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, and that, in, that in itself is a skill set. Yeah, that in itself is a major skill set. For a while, I was just working on lifting weights and handguns, and like, didn't even realize I was still continuing the martial arts. Yeah, path. yeah, and it, it's important. It's important to be strong. I know a lot of door guys said don't train, and I'm like, I never got that. I never got the door guys that never trained, or they're like, well, I know what I got, I know how to handle a situation. And I'm like, well, if you don't really train, you don't know what you got really when the situation hits the fan. When you train on a consistent basis, when you train honestly, um, you always know where you're at. You always know where you're at in your relationship to fear inside yourself and how your body responds. Um, you know, I think that was the most important thing about the training. Also that it gave you, it gives you an outlet as a door guy and a, a, a space to learn how to discipline yourself. When you were training, I've always trained and, and always felt and always teach my people that your own emotions are your, are, your, are your biggest weakness, right? You getting angry. When I'm fighting Trevor, I want to try to piss him off because I know when he's pissed off, he's not thinking clearly, right? So then you start to learn about, wow, me learning to discipline myself is one of the most important factors here. You know, me learning to calm down my own anger and training does that because you're necessarily going to get triggered. You're necessarily going to hit your flashpoint in the training and adrenaline is not your friend. So learning how to get your own body to de-adrenalize, learning how to calm down your own breath, your own heart rate, and doing that in training necessarily transfers over to when you're working the door. It's my biggest problem, with, I think, with a lot of situations that people don't train. Then when they flash, they, they, they don't, they're not able to control their response. Again, I was talking about control. I think entering competitions is one of the only ways that you can learn to control and, and self-meditate in order to get your, to be calm enough for a competition. So if something's going on, you've gone through this, you know the drills, mm -hmm. you know the steps. Yeah. Or yeah. even just going to a serious class. And, 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 and doing and doing and doing doing serious drills. And we'll take it remember well, obviously not going into any techniques now, but I'll start talking about a little bit about the training that we do, um, simulated scenarios, that sort of stuff, which no matter what puts you in that adrenalized state and make yourself work out of it. Yeah. Um, and how invaluable that is to training is training honestly and how invaluable that is to you being on the door. I never understood door guys had never trained. I never, I never, I never got it. I was like, because, you know, when the shit hits the fan, you're not going to rise to the fucking occasion. People think, oh, you know, when the shit, I'm going to rise to the occasion. No, 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 no. You fall to your lowest uh, denominator, you know. You fall to the level of your training. So I was always taught, you know, and, and I realized this from, from, from bouncing for years is that, you know, the best you can hope for in the street is the worst that you do in the gym. That's the best you can hope for, right? So now, once I realized that, I just started to make my worst pretty awesome. You know, once I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, now I've learned how to fight a little bit because even no matter what, I can still maintain, I can still stay in my stance, I can still keep my legs apart, I can still keep my sprawl, I can still get powers in my punches, I can still move. Even when I'm exhausted, I can still maintain the level of my techniques. Even when I'm angry, frustrated, no matter what, because you've learned how to de-escalate yourself and discipline yourself. Um, it's really important. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting about martial arts is because you're training the same people and you're both you're all getting better at the same time. It's a little bit hard to judge yourself against the guy out there. Really, the person you judge yourself is the new guy walking in the gym. When yeah. you start owning the new guy every time, then you're like, oh. mm -hmm. on the street, I'd probably 
you know, sometimes you come across trained people on the street and it's, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, you know, Trevor and I would train together and then we'd work door and then we'd have an opportunity to try out some of the techniques that we just learned. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and not creating that opportunity, but they would just come up. Right. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's, 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 it's the nature of the beast. You know, they would just necessarily come up with that opportunity.